Folks, welcome to GoodWorks Tractors. You know, we've previously compared flail mowers and brush hogs and kind of laid it all out there for you to make your own decision on what's best. And I think, I don't know, maybe I was a little biased on leaning a little bit more towards a flail mower and that's okay. I really, I really, really like flail mowers. But there are certain areas where a brush hog simply is better. And so today we're using the Dirt Dog Brush Hog in a few different situations where I really couldn't use my flail mower as effectively and another benefit to using a brush hog over a flail mower, we've talked about all the pros and cons, is the fact that they are cheaper, all right? So you can get into a brush hog cheaper than a flail mower. Not gonna go over all the features of the Dirt Dog. We've done videos on that too. So these are, in my opinion, a cut above. That, that was a, a pun, right? Is that a pun? I've got a lot of manufacturers that I can work with, but as you can see, I've got a whole trailer load of Dirt Dog stuff here behind me. I really think that they are a level above from a lot of the other manufacturers that are out there. There's some, there's some high quality equipment all over the place, right? But for me, it's a great price point with great features and great quality. Anyways, let's dive right in. Now a flail mower on a three point hitch is gonna sit somewhere in this general area up here while the reach of a brush hog comes almost probably double the length out. And so that is the advantage that I am using with this brush hog today. I've got two different drives coming out to the road on my property and while the county does maintain that and mow along, they don't really reach all that far in. And so the shrubs and the brush, the bushes, everything just grow up and kind of grow out. And as I want to pull out to turn onto the road one way or another, I can't see, my view is obstructed and it's, it's very dangerous. You almost have to peek out into the road a little bit on the nose of your vehicle in order to have a clear line of sight. And with the flail mower, if I wanna go along that roadside and kind of back into those ditches, it just doesn't have enough reach. Again, it's only about half the length roughly of a brush hog. And so this gives me a lot more ability to get back into the brush and the, the trunks themselves to try to cut those down and push them back and just knock them over compared to what I can do with a flail mower. And this is with a 48 inch cutter. If you get a 60 or a 72 while also getting wider, they're gonna get a little bit longer as well. So that gap widens even more between the back of a flail mower and the back of a brush hog, the larger you go. are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a ballast weight solution for your tractor. You know I'm all about safety and this is just a perfect match. Liquid ballast is one of the most cost effective solutions. In fact, there's liquid ballast on this tractor right now, right inside these rear tires. So it's hidden, it's out of the way, it gives you that extra stability you need when you're using the front end loader. It gives you safety to keep those rear wheels planted on the ground and it gives you traction when you need it. Well, why RimGuard? It is a natural product that is gonna be safe around animals and livestock in case you get a puncture and it leaks out. That means it's also gonna be safe on your wheels as well. You know the old calcium chloride that'll rust those things out and ruin them. It is also the heaviest natural ballast weight on the market today and the most convenient, which is available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. So head on over to rimguardsolutions.com to find a dealer near you. Now, similar to a roadside ditch like we mowed, which has a steep incline on it, so does a pond bank. And it can be a bit of a tedious job, and fortunately you don't have to do it very often, maybe just a handful of times a summer, but you can really back down. You kind of come at it 
back into it perpendicular to the pond edge and you can really reach down those steep pond banks and cut. Well, I was able to cut, I don't know, 90, 95% of the tall grass that was along the pond edge there. And that's not something I can do with a zero turn. It's not something I can do with a belly mower, not something I can do with a flail mower. And I can get, I can get closer with a flail mower, but nowhere near what I can do with a brush hog. And I can reach so far, in fact, that I can even get the rear tail wheel all the way down into the pond itself, just trying to get right down to a clean cut along the edge. Another area for me where the brush hog really excels over the flail mower is when you need to reach way underneath trees. And there's just something about mowing underneath trees. I love it. I love how you can clean it up and get the, the brambles and the briars and whatever shrubby stuff and dead branches are down underneath there and make it just, just look nice. And so the brush hog really does that. And you still have to be careful because with your rops bar or the canopy, you can start to knock off some of the upper branches, but you can still either way get way further back underneath there than you can with a flail mower and so i don't know folks maybe there are other areas where a brush hog does be a flail mower as well you know it does not leave as clean and consistent of a cut but it's, it's a brush hog right it's just chopping stuff down it's not meant to be a finished mower not meant to give you a finished result a flail mower you can actually you can mow your lawn with you can get a, a finished result with that just not the case with the brush hog it's going to be faster as well and so at the end of the day I don't think I would lose sleep over it, right? Because they're both gonna get the job done if you're looking for something to cut your fields and maintain all those kind of hard to reach or nasty areas, they can both handle that kind of thing. But if you have more of maybe one type of application, right? Maybe you have a lot of pond edge or a lot of ditch or a lot of big trees to mow under or whatever that is, maybe that leans you more towards a brush hog or maybe you're on a tight budget or a tighter budget and you go towards a brush hog. Or maybe you want that more consistent, clean cut just a, just a tidier finish overall. A flail mower is gonna get you that and handle not just your fields, but even your lawn as well if you wanted to. Now, while we had the hog out, we did tackle some, some trails in the woods. And so you're gonna notice these trails are, are mainly bare dirt and they weren't just a, a week or two ago. I brought my skid steer over and had a debris grapple on there. And that is the only thing I used to make those trails look like that. They were completely overgrown uh, like the woods was and just pushing that grapple along on the skid steer did everything you see. So it left some of those small saplings and in a few areas it didn't, it didn't scrape down clean. So I came back through the brush hog and cleaned that all up. And then I could use your guys' advice. We have some grape vines up here and that was my first time ever mowing through grape vines and uh, I smoked a mirror. Mirror came right off the, off the tractor, got tangled up in the grape vines there too. And we lost some grapes and I can see why orchard tractors would be so valuable to get in between uh, different rows of crops because the vines, the grapes wanted to snag on everything they possibly could on my tractor here, but I don't know anything about maintaining grape vines. And so I don't know what I can spray to keep the weeds and the grass from growing. I look, you know, you drive down the road and you see all the, the big orchards and, and it's basically bare dirt all around there. So I don't know what kind of chemical herbicide they're using on that. And for some reason, I haven't found any great reliable resources on, on Google or on YouTube to kind of talk about maintenance of grapevines and, and, and small vineyards like I guess we have here and uh, what to do with them at harvest time and everything else. So I'm a complete newbie looking to learn something new. So if you have a good resource or some, some tips, you can point me in the right direction, leave some links down in the comments section so I know where to go and educate myself.
All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it for us today. Good look at the Dirt Dog here in action. And I'm gonna give you a quick, a quick overview of what these attachments are. I just had these hauled over to uh, my house. We've got that brand new Summit TX25 tractor required some bigger attachments than what I use on my 1025R. So getting outfitted with all the new stuff here, I'll walk you through it now. All right, so most of this stuff is Dirt Dog. There's a, a couple other things on here too, but first we have the Dirt Dog aerator. 60 inch core plug aerator on there. Gonna be a great fit for it. Got a 60 inch Dirt Dog tiller on there. That's a forward or reverse rotation. Can get it set up either way. Gonna have a 60 inch rotary cutter. Again, all this stuff is a size bigger than I would put on the 1025, even though it's still a 25 horsepower tractor. Next up here, have a 72 inch landscape rake, quick hitch compatible, that's really awesome. This is a precision grapple right here, all right? This thing is wicked. Can't wait to put this thing to work. Back up behind that, we have a 60-inch land plane. Again, a foot larger than the 1025 could use. Then we've got an all-purpose plow. Again, <laughs> it's going to be another foot larger, too. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five shanks on there compared to three shanks that we use on the 1025. Now, last couple things that are here. Uh, we've got a UTV sprayer, 45-gallon. We also have 65-gallon, but I just figured I'd grab the 45-gallon and, and try that out. So that's not for... That, that's not for the tractors, but we do sell them for the tractor. We've done some video on that too. And then last thing here, this is for uh, my skid steer. Possibly you could use it for a, a large utility tractor, but this is going to be a, a limb saw. All right. And this is from HLA skid steer mount here. We got to mount this, this big pole, this big square tube goes right through the frame. It's going to go out this way, I suppose. And then has a saw, a steel saw on the end of it. And, uh, that thing's gonna be awesome to use. Anyway, that's gonna do it for us today. If you're looking for something for your tractor, we're happy to help. We sell and ship all over the country all the time. All the stuff you see here, that's things that we sell and ship. So go to goodworkstractors.com and check it out. And if you enjoy watching tractor videos or you wanna learn more or you wanna learn what not to do, well, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.